In the last video, we had to do several vertex to trib pointer calls and enable these vertex attributes. We also did the divisor. This gives us our instance data. And long before that, we actually enabled the vertex attribute zero for position. We pointed to that data in our buffer. Same thing with color, pointed the, to the data in that, our buffer. Recall that these zeros map to this zero here. So these calls right here are determining how the data, the varying data, the data that varies per vertex, how that data will be mapped into my shader. Position here is that location zero, and so that's what these zeros mean. Color is one, so I have this one. This is the data that will go in for the vertex color. And this data varies. I want to talk about these attribute locations in a little more detail. I showed you in the last video how a matrix takes up four attribute locations. The two just means this is the beginning of my matrix. But really, when I say mate four, that's 16 floats. And each attribute takes up four floats. So that means that the matrix is taking up two, three, four, and five as far as locations. Now I can't syntactically type this. I have to leave it at a two and just know that the next four attribute layout locations are taken up. But if I don't know that... If I don't know that, it looks like, hey, position's at zero, and, and color's at one, and who cares what the data types are? I just know that this is position, here's its layout, and this layout, and this full transform matrix. So what if I wanted to put the transform at one, and the vertex color at two? Well, you know from the last video that the matrix will take up one, two, three, and four, and this two overlaps with this two, which means the color and the, and the matrix would somehow be overlapping, which is kind of awkward and weird. But let's say I didn't understand that. When we actually get down to linking the program here in the install shaders, remember that we send sent our shader code down to the graphics hardware. We said compile it, compile it, uh, make sure the compilations work good, create the program, attach the shaders, and then link the program. The linker is the tool that determines these attribute locations, and the linker will respect your layout locations unless you're stupid, like I'm being right here having my matrix and my color overlap. Watch what happens when I put a breakpoint here. I'll hit F5, build and run this application. Check program status. F10, obviously it failed because we're returning. Looking at the linker error, the linker's like, hey, um, two vertex attribute variables named vertex color and full transform matrix. Okay, vertex color and full transform matrix were assigned to the same generic vertex attribute, which is Two. So even though it doesn't look like they overlap here, they do overlap. So it's nice to see the linker catch that for us and prove that what I said in the last video is, is, is correct. Let's terminate that, get rid of this. Let's put the matrix back at two. I could put the vertex color at location five, and then it wouldn't overlap the, the matrix, but let's just go back to how we had it. That's, that's a little simpler, and I believe it still works. We still have our two cubes. I want to talk about this varying data in a little more detail. We said VEC3 here because our positional data is only three floats, but every attribute, even if you don't use up all four floats, you still get four floats. Okay, my GLSL code, when I compile this, the compiler will be, the compiler will make sure that I'm not using this position, this VEC3, how I shouldn't be. But underneath in the hardware, even though I can't see it up here in shaderland code, it's still four floats. If I have one float, maybe I have a varying attribute that's just one float, and so I'll say float, and I set up my pointers for one float, the pointers right here, the trip pointers. I'm only sending in one float, but underneath, I still get four floats, even though I'm only using one. So there you go, this layout location. And I told you that this location number has to match this location here. Uh, this layout instruction in GLSL is actually new. So if you do not support it, if your hardware doesn't support it, it's the same as me taking it out. How am I going to specify the layout locations now? Well, I already showed you how the linker determines the layout locations. So what we can do is actually let the linker do its job. Okay, just make sure we link, check the program status, then right after we've linked, I can query and say, hey, where are these attribute locations? I can say glint, uh, let's do position, attribute, location, that's going to be kind of long, let's just say position, location, gets, 
And let's move this to the right. Get at, oh wait, GL, get attribute location, uh, program ID, and then the name of the attribute I'm querying. I'm querying position, so I'll say position here. And let's let, let's do all three. Why not? We have vertex color, full transformation matrix. So I'll say color location and transform location. And this will be vertex color. This string right here must match the attribute, the varying data I'm trying to locate. And we have full transform matrix. Full transform matrix. Copy that. Paste that right there. And then put a breakpoint right here just so we can watch where the linker put these attribute locations. F5, run this. Position is at 0, color is at 1, transform is at 2. So it looks like the linker just took the textual position of these, though I would not rely on that behavior. I would not assume that's the behavior. I'd still use this trick to figure out where exactly are these attributes so you don't make any assumptions and your program crashes. Let's just have some fun, though. I'm going to stop debugging, control L, control V, I'm going to move the transformation matrix up above the vertex color. Let's see if that changes these numbers over here. F5, transform location is 1, color location is at 5 now. Okay, the transform took up those four sets of four floats, 16 floats, and then the color got bumped to 5. Now if you don't want to rely on the behavior of the linker Choosing your attribute locations, you want to set your own locations as we did before in the shader code, but maybe your hardware doesn't support doing that. You can actually set that layout location explicitly in C++ just as if you did it right here, but you must do that before linking because the linker is, the linker is what determines where those attribute locations are. So I'm going to say GL bind a trib location for program. ID. Again, we have to do this before linking, so I don't know why my linker command is up there. Bind a trib location, program ID, and let's just bind the position to 2. Okay, that's going to be kind of awkward, but we'll say, we'll say for 2, I want position to be at 2. So the linker could put the color at, at a 0 or 1. The full transformation matrix can't sit at 0 or 1 because that's not enough floats for this, so the linker is going to have to come up with something else. For the other guys, I can be explicit and bind just position. I could bind all three of these as long as my bindings make sense, but I must do it before linking. In this case, I'm only binding position, so the linker will still choose for vertex color and full transformation matrix. Let's run this, F5, and see what the linker chose for us. The position I said was going to be at 2, so position location was set to 2. Very nice. Thank you, Linker, for obeying my command here. Color location's at 0. That makes sense. I'm going to guess that the matrix ended up at 3, and location 1 was wasted. Let's hover over this, and I'm, I'm correct. The matrix was put at 3, and the attribute 1 was wasted. So there you go. There's some options. You can bind the attribute location before linking, or you can just let the linker decide and then query it, or you can be explicit if your hardware supports it, your OpenGL version supports it. You can just say what the layouts are here and not fuss with any of this or any of this, and as long as the program links, you know you're fine.